Welcome to Bear Archery's Hunting 101 podcast, where hunters new and old come to learn and find inspiration from stories of hunts gone by. Everyone is welcome to enjoy the outdoor way of life, and there is no better time to start than right now. So let's head into the great outdoors with your host, Dylan Ray. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us today on Bear Archery's Hunting 101 podcast. As always, presented by our good friends over at Scentlock. Uh, you guys know the deal. Scentlock, uh, with their activated carbon, uh, gives you the maximum odor absorption uh, to keep you in the field longer, more successful days in the field. And uh, and their BE1 series is just, it's really a toolkit uh, that'll get you from early season all the way to late season. Go check out our friends over at Scentlock. Guys, I have with me um, one of the most, well, I don't know how to say this. I, I don't think I can give you a good enough intro. Uh, one of the most profound bow hunters maybe in history. Um, one of the most special guests I've ever had on the show for sure. And, and a friend of mine, a, a guy that I'm proud to, to, to say that I've become friends with. He wouldn't say that, but I would. Uh, I tell everybody we've become friends, but I have Mr. Chuck Adams on the phone. Chuck, how are you, man? I'm doing great, and you are a friend, Dylan. <laughs> now, for those of you um, who, who just, I, I don't even know what to say. For those of you who've been living under a rock, uh, Chuck, give us an introduction to yourself, my friend. Boy, I don't know uh, how to introduce myself, uh, except that I've been a bow hunter most of my life, and uh, I, I love going after big animals at this uh, juncture in my uh, life because there's more challenge involved. and. Uh, uh, I just love to bow hunt uh, more than just about anything else, and I do as much as I can. Now, I don't know if I don't know if you could create an argument for anybody else as the greatest bow hunter um, currently. I mean, you know, we could talk Fred Bear, obviously, but uh, the greatest bow hunter currently. Um, I don't think you could build an argument for anybody other than Chuck Adams, and uh, Chuck was the guy for me. You know, growing up, my dad was big into magazines and and saving articles and and uh, that was the thing. And uh, and Chuck was his guy. Like Chuck was that guy for my dad. And so I grew up always hearing about and 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 you know Chuck Adams did this. Chuck killed that. Chuck killed this. Chuck, you know, Chuck's on his hundredth. Chuck's on his two hundredth Pope and Young. Chuck on, and, and I heard all this about Chuck Adams. Well, when I, when I started work for Pope and Young, I remember my phone rang and I answered it and the voice said, this is Chuck Adams. And, and I almost dropped the phone. Like I was almost like, holy crap. Like, how is this even possible? Now I get to be the part, be a part, small part of a huge special announcement, uh, that Mr. Chuck Adams is coming to bear archery. Chuck Adams joining, uh, bear archery for me is, is, I mean, that's, it makes the most sense of, of anything. Uh, you've got a legend joining a legendary company and somebody who, who you, I don't know if you started with a bear, uh, but you've hunted a lot with a bear and now you're coming to bear archery. And that's just for me, just incredibly humbling, uh, but also incredibly exciting. So tell me uh, kind of what initiated that switch to bear archery. Well, as you know, Dylan, um, Fred bear was my idol as a kid same as he was for many people. And uh, when I became an outdoor writer back in the 70s, uh, I had the rare pleasure of uh, interviewing Fred in Grayling, Michigan for an article for Peterson's Hunting Magazine. And in the years that followed, I spent some time around Fred at, uh, at dinner engagements and sports shows and whatnot. And uh, he was just an awesome guy. And I did shoot bear archery equipment uh, early in my career. Uh, uh, the old Bear Alaskan compound bow uh, was the bow I shot my first official Pope and Young animal with, uh, a Canada moose back in 1976. Uh, I shot several Bear Recur bows during that time. And uh, after that, I shot uh, uh, other brands, Jennings for a while. Uh, you know, Jer Jennings was affiliated with Bear for a while. And uh, uh, then I went with another company that I was with for 37 years. But um, this year, I decided I need to make a switch. Uh, uh, the folks at Bear have an awesome product line. Uh, uh, they're really 
on the map big time these days. And uh, the product line is reasonably priced. And that was one of my big factors in making the switch because uh, some other companies are really producing bows, I think are overpriced, particularly for the average bow hunter who is the one I've always written to. The same as Fred Bear always talked to the average bow hunter. Uh, you don't have to mortgage your house to uh, buy a bare bow and, and go out and, and knock the eyes out of the target and then shoot animals. Uh, and I just think uh, my affiliation with Bear uh, maximizes uh, my influence with the general public, uh, helping them use good products at a reasonable price. Yeah, and for me, um, that was always my my biggest appeal um, to Bear Archery. And, I, and I've said this, if I've said it once, I've said it a hundred times, but, you know, new bow launch day is exciting for, for advanced bow hunter. Uh, but Bear Archer, when they put out their catalog, I can look through that catalog and be like, oh, there's a new compound for me. There's a new recurve for me. Oh, here's a new crossbow for my dad. Here's a new compound for my wife. Here's a new bow for my eight-year-old. Here's one for my seven, five-year-old. Here's one. I mean, they have a bow for everybody, and it doesn't really matter, you know, whether you've been in it for a year or 20 years. They've got a new bow coming out for you every year. And that's just, I feel as though, like, what Bear Archery has done is is almost unheard of because some people come out with two or three new bows um but bear archery will come out with seven or eight new bows and like i said you know two of those will be top end uh compounds that'll that'll hold their own against anybody um and you're gonna have three or four recurves come out and then you're gonna have a couple uh you're gonna have a ladies compound and you're gonna have a, a kids compound and a couple crossbows it's insane how bear archery has really set themselves up um to be the go-to product for any and all bow hunters it's crazy it sure is if you look through the uh current bear catalog uh, you're like a kid in a candy store if you got a little money in your pocket <laughs> uh, yeah <laughs> i mean i was looking through and uh, i just ordered the refined compound and the alaskan compound but then i'm looking at the recurve bows too because i love shooting recurves and uh uh you know the bear takedown that i shot years and years ago is was very similar to the one that's available now. Uh, I like the fact that I could shoot a 60 or 62 or 64 inch uh, uh, long recurve bow uh, that doesn't stack when I come to full draw. And, uh, and so it, it's exciting. I really am a little perplexed looking through the catalog because I don't know where to jump first. Yeah, that's an issue. That's, <laughs> that becomes an issue. And, uh, you know, I know due to your history with the Alaskan, you were kind of pulled that way which I want to ask you about, but I was super torn between the Alaskan and the refined. Just looking at numbers, you're like, man, two great bows. And, uh, and it can become sort of perplexing, uh, to, to try and decide which bow. I got a lot of questions to ask you. I'm excited to kind of get into the history of you and bear archery. Uh, before we do, I'm also excited to announce, um, one of the newest sponsors of the show and that's arrow junkie. Um, I met Dan at a mountain archery fest event. Last year, he became a buddy of mine. He's a Razorback fan. We have that in common. But uh, Arrow Junkie um, puts out all of the components to build arrows, all the saws and tuning tools and and uh, everything that you need to build your own arrows and really get back to the art of building your own arrows. Uh, he also does custom builds, uh, and Dan does a fantastic job of, of building custom arrows. Uh, so go check out Arrow Junkie for all of your arrow building, custom arrow building needs, uh, because Dan is fantastic at it, arrowjunkie.com. Um, Chuck, you said your first Pope and Young Animal, and for some people, they're like, well, that's cool, your first Pope and Young Animal. But what most people might not understand is you have 200 and what, 13 now? 210. 210. It'll yeah. be 13 mm -hmm. before long. Uh, yeah. 210 Pope and Young Animals, which is just insane. Um, that's incredible. And your first one was taken with a bear Alaskan. Uh, tell me about that hunt. Well, it was uh, British Columbia, Canada. Uh, Canada Moose Hunt, 1976. Uh, the weather was brutally cold. It was October. Uh, the rut was going, and uh, we were riding horses, which is not one of my favorite things to do uh, uh, because they usually give you trouble. They gave us trouble on that trip, and I finally jumped off my horse and uh, 
stopped at Musa, was about half a mile away across the valley, and uh, got within a uh, good bow range of him uh, with my 70 pound uh, Alaskan bow. And at that time, I was shooting uh, 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 East and Autumn Orange Arrows, uh, the old XX 75s with a Zicky, Zicky Black Diamond Broadhead. And uh, one shot through the heart and that moose didn't take four steps and just dropped over. And uh, you've seen the picture. It's really nice record book moose. And I was tickled to death. That's incredible. Now, since then, how long did you shoot bear after that? Like what was the last boat, the berry shot what was the last berry shot. I shot uh, the, the Alaskan for about three years and uh, I, I shot uh, black bear and black tail deer in my native state of California, mule deer in Montana, uh, uh, moose and elk with that bow. And then I uh, uh, had Tom Jennings uh, uh, invite me to his factory in Southern California. I went in there and I liked the Jennings bows. So I played around with the old Jennings Aerostar for a while and uh, liked it and retired my uh, Bear Alaskan. I still have that bear Alaskan to this day. It's hanging on the wall in my office. That's cool. That is cool. What you need to do is is do a side by side of the old bear Alaskan and the new bear Alaskan. I think that'd be a great thing to do. Absolutely. They're certainly cool. different. That old bear Alaskan was about forty six inches axle to axle. It had wheels as tiny as uh, yeah nickels. Uh, yeah, you can imagine uh, a totally different animal than they are yeah. today and. Very slow too. I think I was shooting at about two oh five feet per second with that bow. You know those but, old bows. Those old bows. It seems like uh, instead of let off, it seems like you're holding back more weight than you even drew. And then it sounds. You might as well be shooting a gun because it sounds like a gun going off. And then it it hurts your hand with the shock in it. Uh, it's it's crazy how far they've come for sure. Oh, that's right. That's right. I uh, I shot my first my first deer with a bow. Of course, this was 2000 and 2011. I shot my first deer with a bow, and uh, I shot it with like a 86 uh, bow, a bow from 86. And uh, the only reason my dad had that bow laying around is because that was the bow that Chuck Adams shot. And uh, so that was the bow that I was that I began with because it was you know the bow my dad had laying around. And I remember, man, uh, I actually went back home not too long ago and pulled it out of the closet and. And I, I drew it back and I'm like, good Lord, it's only a 60 pound bow, but it feels like you're holding back 80. And it's just, it's crazy. Um, but no, it's, it really is. It's crazy how far they've come for sure. Well, the new Alaskan lets off 80%. Uh, uh, that old Alaskan let off, I can't remember 40 or 50%. Uh, so you're definitely holding a lot of weight on your fingers, but that's good for a finger release. Uh, you don't want too much let off for finger release right. or the string hangs up. So I got to ask you, Chuck, bear archery slogan is um, the Fred Bear way. Um, mm -hmm. So with you coming and joining bear archery, uh, what does it mean for you to be joining the Fred Bear way or, or to to kind of, you know, align yourself with the Fred Bear way? What does that mean to you? Well, it means a lot, partly because he was my hero when I was a kid. Uh, partly, if I do say so, a lot of people over the years have compared me with Fred Bear. Um, uh, we're both down to earth guys. Uh, uh, we have always appealed both of us to the general public uh, in the bow hunting realm. And uh, uh, I was I was really humbled and gratified a while back. Uh, one of the big camouflage companies did a large internet survey, and they asked who's the greatest bow hunter living and the greatest bow hunter dead. Fred Bear took like 95% of the, the passed away category. And I got over 75% of the uh, still living category. And uh, that kind of confirmed what people have been telling me over the years. I don't compare myself with Fred Bear because I don't think anybody can pair with him. He was, he was such a pioneer in our sport. He, he, he uh, put bow hunting on the map more than anybody else. And, uh, uh, I'm just happy to be uh, continuing the legacy of uh, bear archery. You know, I, you can't, you can't ever, uh, you know, I don't think there will ever be another one to look back and say, 
nobody did more for the sport of archery than Fred Bear. Um, and, and and now to align myself with a company that I truly feel is carrying on Fred Bear's um, legacy in a way that he would be proud of, that means something. Um, it means something to be a part of a company that that not only has the Fred Bear name, but that I truly believe carries themselves in a way that Fred Bear would be proud of. And, you know, I, 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 when you hear the, the term, the Fred bear way, I mean, it just brings that kind of sense of, of pride of, of we're bow hunters and, and we should, we should care about other bow hunters and we should care about, you know, working to help other bow hunters and create new bow hunters and, and we should make ourselves better uh, along the way, but, but don't forget about others. And, uh, and, and, you know, to, to, to hear the words, the Fred bear way. And, and now of course, you know, on the refine, you've got it on the back of your riser. Every time you're shooting, you can see it, but it just brings that sense of, of bow hunting pride and bow hunting legacy into what we do. And, and, you know, I think a lot of times people forget, like people think there's something special and people think that, that because of what you shoot or how you shoot it, you're something special. Uh, well, the fact that we're bow hunters is what makes us special. And, and I think Fred Bear knew that. No, I don't think. Fred Bear did know that. Um, mm. And it wasn't if you shoot a bear bow, you're special. Or if you wear this camo, you're special. Or if you wear these boots, you're special. It was the fact that we're bow hunters makes us special. And and that's why I think just aligning myself with, with bear archery and the Fred Bear way, um, I truly think Fred Bear would be proud of, of how bear archery handles themselves. And I truly think Fred Bear would be proud to see Chuck Adams come on board. I do. Well, thank you for that. I, I'm such a bear junkie that uh, I have the only uh, collector's takedown bow from years and years ago, signed by both Fred and his wife. Uh, it's the really? only one. I've got his, his original hunting knife and compass that he carried for many, many years back in the 50s and 60s. Uh, uh, and uh, obviously, I have books signed by Fred because I was savvy enough to get those when he was still alive. So uh, to be associated with him is nothing new for me. This is just another angle on it. And I will say Fred took things a step further than just uh, uh, trying to get all bow hunters together, uh, which is kind of like herding cats, as you know, sometimes. But um, he he coined the phrase uh, two season hunter, and he was in favor of gun hunters and bow hunters getting together and gun hunters using a bow as well as a gun. So he tried to bring everybody in the hunting uh, realm together. And I think he did a darn good job of it. Yeah, um, I, I absolutely think that's true. And, you know, I just think going back and and reading some of your articles and, and, and looking through some of your book and, and I really truly believe. And that's why I think that, that Chuck Adams with bear archery, it just, it absolutely makes sense. It's not just something where I'm like, Oh, cool. We got a great bow hunter on board, but I think the, the, the history makes sense. I think the, the legendary status, I mean, if there's not many bow hunters that you can give that status to, um, and, and I think that that status and that, that, just the way that that you present yourself and carry yourself, I think it makes absolute perfect sense, and uh, and that's why I'm so excited to see you come uh, to Bear Archery. Um, <clears throat> what bows will you be shooting? I know you got um, the Alaskan. Uh, what other bows are you going to be trying out? I'm going to try the Refine. Uh, you know, that's the flagship this year. Uh, it's got a, a uh, noise dampening system that is out of this world. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm going to try the Alaskan too for old time's sake. It's a little simpler bow than the refine. Um, I've always liked simplicity, but I'm just going to compare them side by side and which one I like best. Uh, I think I'm going to try the super Kodiak, uh, uh, takedown bow also. And, uh, or not takedown. That's not the takedown. That's the one piece bow in a 60 inch. And then, uh, uh, the, the wood handle uh, takedown and probably a 64 inch uh, and play around with those. But uh, I mostly hunt with a compound bow. I like the high let off. Uh, it's easier on your muscles and joints after all these years of hunting and, uh, uh, and, and shooting at targets, which I love to do. Do you, uh, do you ever shoot, do you ever hunt with a recurve anymore? 
No, I don't. I play around with it on a target range. Uh, uh, I, I own over three dozen recurves and longbows, and including the every recurve except my old target, my HC 300 target bow uh, from Bear that I shot in college uh, in intercollegiate competition. I made the big mistake of selling that years ago, but all of my hunting bows I still have uh, from way back then. Uh, but I'm a, I'm pretty much a compound guy when it comes to serious hunting now. Right. Now, you're going to be this week, actually, well, tomorrow, This this when this episode airs, um, ATA is tomorrow, and you're going to be uh, at ATA spending a little time around the Bear Archery booth. Now, I'm excited for some people to come and, and kind of hear these Bear Archery stories and, and the history between Chuck and Bear. Um, you know, because this might seem like a, an, oh, Chuck got a new contract. Or Chuck, well, well, no, this is kind of like a, a long-term friend coming back to where he belongs, in, in my eyes. Um, did you ever get to hunt with Fred Bear? Never did, no. Never did. He was, uh, it was in his later years when I first met him and uh, uh, spent time with him. And, and uh, so I never had the pleasure of going to Grouse Haven or, uh, or actually hunting with him. But we talked about hunting an awful lot. Uh, uh, and uh, like I said before, he was a down to earth guy. He would talk to just about anybody anywhere about hunting. Uh, and you never felt intimidated. You never felt like he was strutting around. Uh, he was he was just a, a, a darn good guy. Now, if if you could pick one person um, to go on a hunt with, would it be Fred Bear? Sure, it would be. Of course, that's uh, about thirty five years too late for that. But uh, any person, uh, dead or yeah. gone, would it be Fred yeah. Bear? It would be Fred Bear. Uh, 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 you know, maybe maybe a distant second would be Saxon Poper or Young, uh, but uh, uh, Fred Bear was he was just a genuine hunter. He loved to hunt. Uh, he hunted whitetails in in uh, Michigan for years and years and years, and then he branched out and hunted brown bear and 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 uh, sheep and many many other types of animals in North America. Those are the kind of critters that I like to go after. He wasn't just a uh, tree stand hunter. He was a serious foot hunter, which is what I do mostly. Right. Um, now, what uh, if you could if you could only from this point on, and you've killed all of them, uh, but from this point on, if you could only hunt one big game species, what would it be? Definitely elk. I just love elk. Uh, I, I'm glad I don't have to pick because uh, every animal in North America is worth while for one reason or another, but. Elk bring it all to the table. Uh, they're big, they're uh, uh, tasty. Uh, the, the country they live in is awesome. Uh, the sounds they make during the rut will, will make the hair stand up on the back of your neck. Uh, and they're not easy. A big old bull, uh, even when he's rutting, uh, is not a pushover. Uh, and when you get wrap your hand around those antlers, you know you've done something. Yeah. Um, now. What all do you have coming up 2022? What all will you be chasing with a bear bow this year? Well, I may go on a mountain lion hunt here in the next couple of, couple of months. Uh, that remains to be seen based on snow uh, levels in various places and in, in my schedule. But uh, the first big hunt will be uh, for Sitka deer in Alaska. I try to do that every year. That'll be in August. And then uh, elk and antelope in uh, multiple states in uh uh, September, also mule deer in September and October. I'm always trying to get another wild bison tag because I love to hunt wild bison. That might be in the cards, but um, I'm guessing based on my bonus points in various states and whatnot, I'll probably go after at least 10 or 12 big game animals uh, in August, September, and October. Now, speaking of Alaska, um, you know, the bear archery crowd you know, unless they're kind of, unless they kind of include themselves in that, that trophy count, you know, world record stuff, they might've missed that, uh, you just harvested a new world record. Uh, Pope and Young just announced a new world record for you. Um, tell me a little bit about that. Well, that was really exciting for me, Dylan, uh, uh because next to elk, Sitka deer are probably my favorite animals to hunt because you get multiple tags in Alaska. It's all severe backpack and bivouac hunting, which I love to do. 
Uh, they're not very big animals in the antlers, but uh, everything's relative. And back in uh, 1986, I broke the world record with Pope and Young on hardhorn Sitka blacktail, typical category. And uh, to uh, go to Alaska for the 18th time uh, last summer on a, on a backpack hunt by myself because I couldn't get any of my friends to take the time off to go. Uh, uh, I offered. I offered. <laughs> I said, Chuck, I'm on my way. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was I, already pretty And I've been sad. with you. I think it was like a day before you left. But right. Yeah. Had I been with you, I can almost promise you would not have killed a new world record. <laughs> I would have slowed you down. I would have messed you up. I would have I would have I would have made a mistake or busted an animal or whatever. But uh, I can almost promise you I would have found some way to to mess you up there. <laughs> well, I, I don't know if that's true. You're being quite humble, I know, but uh uh I was backpacking 10 to 15 miles a day and looking over a lot of country and quite a few deer. And uh, uh, ironically, I flew in, set up camp, walked out of camp, and the first deer I saw on that trip was the world record. Uh, I mean, I was seeing hundreds of deer oh. over three three weeks, but uh, I, I came over a little rise. I wasn't even in country where I thought I'd find most of the deer. That's maybe why he was big, because he was in a low-lying area, a little swale. And uh, there he was, and I knew he was huge. I didn't know he'd be a world record, but I knew he was huge. And so I made a made a stock uh, into the wind and uh, nailed him at 36 yards. Now, you said you can kill multiple deer, which you did. And mm -hmm. the second one was a giant as well. Well, they were all, all three of my bucks. It's It's... It's the single best hunt I've ever had, uh, uh, except for 1986. In 1986, uh, we could get five deer in Alaska on Kodiak Island. Uh, I broke the world record for Pope and Young twice in two days on that trip. I was uh, about, about it was a nine-hour uphill backpack from base camp, um, and the worst part was packing two deer out on my back. But um, because they weigh 50 to 60 pounds of boneless meat. Uh, unfortunately, it was all downhill. But I shot uh, five four-by-four four bucks on that trip. That that trip was really special. But this would, would be right, right up there, my, my uh, 2021 trip, uh, uh, because all three of my deer grow scored over 100 inches. 100-inch uh, deer are, are pretty rare uh, in Giant. the sacred category. Giants. Uh, yeah, um, and then... The second biggest one is was between 104 and 105, so I was I was obviously happy with that hunt. Now, if correct me if I'm wrong, because you probably know better than I do, but for those of you who don't know how big a hundred inch Sitka deer is, 75 is the is the minimum for Pope and Young, correct? It is, yes, uh -huh. in and the typical category. That, I mean, yeah. that's just insane. And and your world record was what 106? I'm 109 and 7 eighths is the velvet world record i just took the uh hard horn one i took in 86 was 108 and uh four eighths so basically what chuck just said is the world record is 108 and he killed three all just inches away from 108 i mean that's just <laughs> that's insane that's incredible uh, to put it in, to hear to put it in perspective the boone and crockett minimum for sitka is 108 and you've got to have a really big animal to make Boone and Crockett in any category. That is insane. Insane. Um, now I remember seeing that picture and I remember you posting, um, rough score or something, you know, I rough scored it or whatever. And I remember immediately calling some people and I'm like, if Chuck is right, which it's kind of hard to be off multiple inches on a 109 inch animal, you know what I mean? Uh, I was like, if Chuck is right, he just broke Alan Boland's world record. And uh, and I think I even texted Alan. I think I sent a picture of it to Alan. I'm like, dude, I think you just got dethroned, my friend. And uh, and and I think his response was, it would be Chuck. I think that's <laughs> I think that's what he said was it would be Chuck. Um, but no, huge congratulations uh, because I remember as you left with that trip. Um, you know, we had kind of began talking. I'd love to see you come to Bear Archery. 
uh, man, I, that would be so cool. That would be awesome. And I remember texting the guys from Bear Archer, and I'm like, we should have stinking got him before he killed the world record. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it would have been nice to have a bear bow in that picture. Uh, but but there's there's the future. I mean, the, the future uh, looks pretty bright at this point. Uh, one of the things that really tickles me about that world record is it was my sixth Pope and Young world record. Um, to my knowledge, uh, at least I've been told this multiple times, uh, the late great Fred Bearer was the only other bow hunter to take more than one Pope and Young world record. He had two, um, the Stone Sheep uh, from British Columbia, Canada, and the uh, Alaska brown bear uh, from the peninsula. Uh, uh, I think he killed it in White Bay. And uh, to uh, be in that tiny category with Fred Bear uh, really makes me happy. Absolutely. Absolutely. It should. It should. Mm -hmm. uh, before we move on, let me give a quick thank you to our friends over at HuntWise. Um, just a while back, I was looking for kind of a new mapping system, and, and I had just kind of got worn out on the one I was using uh switched to hunt wise and i have been incredibly incredibly pleased with their mapping system but also um their hunt predictions are incredible um now you can look at it in terms of like a one deer day a five deer day and this year all of the days where it showed a five deer day i ran out to the woods got in a tree stand and days were just phenomenal um their, their hunt predictions are incredible but also um, as a member of HuntWise, you can save on a lot of other products. Um, you get a big discount to ScentLock, and I tell everyone that you'll gain the 100 bucks back you spend on HuntWise the first time you place an order at ScentLock. Go to HuntWise.com, use code HUNT101, and you'll get your membership for 20% off. I am a huge fan of HuntWise. I use it literally every day, not even just in hunting season. So go check out HuntWise. Chuck. I got to tell you, if I could, if I could pick one person to go on a hunt, I believe it would be an elk hunt with Chuck Adams. I do. That's a, that's a very nice thing to say. Uh, I know you'd have fun. Yeah, I, I'm, <laughs> I'm sure. But then we'd look back and, and you would say, yeah, I wouldn't have killed that new world record if you were with me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I don't know. I usually go the opposite direction from any of my hunting partners. Uh, so uh, we'd be enjoying camp time together. But uh, like Fred Bear did years ago, uh, uh, he quite often had multiple people in camp, but he'd go do his own thing and then come back, usually with blood yeah. on his arrow. Yeah. yeah. And that's the joy of hunting. It really is. And, you know, I don't think people understand, like, you talk to people and they're like, how can you go out and sit behind binoculars for eight hours? Like, how can you do that? Or how can you go sit in a tree stand freezing cold for 12 hours? How do you, how can you even dream of doing that? And then I look at them and I'm like, you live life stressed to the max. Like you live life in a constant hustle and bustle. You live life in this constant frantic, I like, got to get here and got to get there and got to get there. I'm like, do you know how much good it would do you to go out and sit for 12 hours and not talk to anybody and not do anything? And that's the joy of hunting, especially sharing a hunting camp. Uh, you know, I was recently uh, in Whitetail Camp with some really good friends of mine. And and sure, you might be gone, you know, 12 hours all day long hunting by yourself. But then you get back to camp and you get to share stories and tell stories. And, oh, I saw the big eight or you saw the tall nine or, you know, I saw the the what I mean, it's just it's it's one of the very few sports that offers such such opportunity to be alone and have that moment of peace, but then get to share it with other people as well. It's incredible. It really is. Uh, the only good thing about my hunting in Alaska by myself this year was that the days are 19 and 20 hours long in, in, in some of the summertime. So they're really, when you're up there with a friend or two, there's not much time to uh, have have camp life. You're exhausted. You go to bed. You get up and you go hunting again. That's the only good thing. But not like like the elk hunt we're talking about, you're talking September, maybe early October, depending on where you are. Uh, you have ample downtime in camp but to just uh, uh, share your experiences uh, and and have fun and. Yeah, uh, re and relax, which, as, as you just pointed out, the average person 
today doesn't get that much relaxation time. That it's it's crazy to me. And then you hear of these, and I'm all for vacations. I'm a big vacation guy. Um, but then you hear people say, "Well, I went on vacation," and then you hear about their vacation, and you're like, or, "When did you like rest? Like when did you, when did you turn your phone off? And when did you?" It's all these shows and these and that and you're running around on vacation just like you run around at home and i'm like mm-hmm. well when was your just your your time you know to just do, ab- do absolutely nothing um and that's what I, I i i can't stress to people enough about hunting i'm like it is a sport um it is there are some very uh physical um restraints put on your body but at the same time it's like the most therapeutic thing you could ever do. And, uh, you know, I remember going on that hunt. Uh, well, I don't think I've ever shared this with you, but I went on a bear hunt in Idaho and, uh, you know, for a Midwestern boy sitting at a thousand feet of elevation, you know, camp was at like 7,000. And we went up from there. Um, I was sucking wind the whole time. I mean, I was miserable the whole time, but then you get back and you feel refreshed. You feel like, I mean, we put in a hundred miles that week. But you come back worn out, but you also come back refreshed and just rejuvenated. And because for that week, all you thought about was hunting. All you thought about was, yeah, you might sit behind the glass for seven hours in a day. But you had a week of, I don't have anything else to worry about. And and I think if a lot of people would just give it a shot, um, they would see the beauty in it. Yeah, and if you're lucky, there's no cell service where you are, uh, no internet where you are. Uh, So you're forced to put away the gadgets that uh, in some ways complicate your life. And uh, all you have to think about is sitting for eight hours with binoculars glued to your eyes. Uh, And uh, it's it's, it's very relaxing. What's your favorite state to hunt in? Boy, that would be... uh, Probably Alaska because there are more species up there. Uh, uh, Montana, where I lived for nine years, it, it would be a close second, along uh, with Wyoming, where I live now. Uh, just because the Rocky Mountains offer a lot of species, uh, they're not overhunted. There's elbow room, um, uh, but if, if I had to pick one, I'd say Alaska, just because of the variety up there. I would absolutely. That's on. That's on my my top of the line top of the list bucket list where i want to hunt um never had the the pleasure of going never had the pleasure of hunting it but it is certainly on the top of my list um have do you have you spent a lot of time in texas i i have yeah i i almost moved to texas a number of years ago uh i think i it was like 16 times i flew down there with to meet with realtors I was looking at the hill country of Texas. Uh, uh, I've hunted exotics down there, uh, black buck and audad and whatnot, but mostly white tailed deer. Now that is, I, I love, I love hunting Texas because you said it best just right there. You said the hill country. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, a lot of times when people think Texas, they think flat, desert, hot, heat. Um, but you can get to the Davis Mountains and be in mountain mountains. Um, and Texas just offers such a variety, you know, not only of game, obviously Texas has a, a crazy amount of game when you pull into, um, into account all of their, their exotics, but even not exotics, I mean, uh, crazy amounts of species to hunt, but also crazy amounts of different terrains to hunt. I mean, it, you could be in desert or you could be in, in mountains. Um, and it's just, it's, it's insane. And, uh, and I love hunting Texas. Um, and I can't wait to go back this year, uh, hunting axis deer, free range axis mm-hmm. deer in Texas. I'm incredibly excited to get down there and do that. Have you ever done that? I, I've never shot an axis deer. Uh, the, the operative word there is free range. Uh, uh, I, I like to hunt free range and, uh, uh, axis deer and Audad free range in Texas are probably the two most difficult except for uh, white tailed deer. I spent a lot of time in South Texas and wild hogs. I grew up hunting wild hogs in California as a kid. And uh, uh, the abundance of wild hogs in Texas has always turned my head uh, on whitetail hunts. You know, I'd be hoping 
Uh, I'd see wild hogs almost more than a 10 point whitetail at times, just because I love wild hogs and they have big tusks down there too, which, which is a real turn on. I love hog hunting. It's, you know, some people get so turned off by it. Uh, mm -hmm. but I absolutely, I love hog hunting. I love crawling around in the, on the ground, trying to get close to them. I love, oh, it's just so much fun. It's, 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 it's a hunt. I mean, you really can't compare it to anything else. Um, it's just, it's incredible. It's so much fun. Um, I like it because it really gives a guy an opportunity to try new things. You want to get better at spotting stock and go hog hunting. Um, and, and the reason I say that is, you know, as opposed to elk or sheep or, or, or anything else, deer, um, you'll have a lot more opportunities on hogs to put a stock on. You know, I mean, you, you might see 50 hogs and, and it gives you a lot of opportunities to try a lot of stocks and to try mm -hmm. a lot of different things and to, and to get as close as you can. And to, and then if you don't, if you blow a stock and, and all the pigs run out, well, don't worry, you'll find more, um, you know, as opposed to elk, you might only have the one stock and if you blow it, you blew it. Um, and so I, I always in, encourage people, um, to, if you're starting out on hunting, don't, don't just look over hogs. I mean, they are a really good tool to kind of hone in your hunting skills. Well, that was probably my number one skill sharpener as a teenager when I started bow hunting. Uh, the, the limit uh, on hogs in California when I grew up was one a day. That tells you how many there were in that state. And I probably shot easily 250 or 300 wild hogs with my bow before I ever shot uh, an elk or, or anything else but a deer. Uh, and you're right, it, it, it sharpens your ability to get up on other animals that you might only have one or two chances at. Right. Now, Chuck, I'm excited to ask you this. Um, this is, I ask every guest, you know, Fred Bear was big on his field notes. I ask every guest, what's one field note um, that you could share with us that you've learned over the years uh, that I could take and make myself a better hunter with? Well, the old saying that uh, success is 10% uh, inspiration and 90% perspiration is something I never forget. Uh, I think if you're persistent, uh, if you never give up, uh, sooner or later, you're going to succeed. And uh, it's like the glassing for eight hours you were talking about before. You know, if it doesn't work to glass eight hours, you need to glass 10 hours. And uh uh, it, it'll it'll overcome all kinds of uh, problems you have with your your shooting or your hunting ability if you keep hammering away at it. Uh, uh, that that's the most important thing in bow hunting. Everything's important. You need to try to shoot well. You need to uh, hone your your stalking or stand sitting skills. But uh, uh, never giving up is probably the most important thing. I give up around uh, December 1st uh, for whitetails. And, uh, you know, at, at that point, I feel sorry for any forky that walks through there. Um, I do a really good job. I do a really good job October through November of passing up, you know, the 120s, the 125s. Um, but then come December 1st, I'm like, it's got horns. I'm shooting it. Uh, and my dad this year, actually, he said it. Um, I was waiting for somebody to say it, but I FaceTimed him and I'm like, dude, I just shot one. And, uh, I was like, I'm about to walk out, you know, I'm going to, I'm going to trail the blood. And so I did it with him on FaceTime, walked up to the buck and, uh, he was like, well, dude, you sent me videos big of bigger deer than that at 10 yards this year. And I'm like, yeah, but that was earlier in the year. This one caught me on a bad day. Um, uh, <laughs> that's usually when I give up. Uh, but, um, no, I'm excited. Here's what I want to do. Um, I've never had access to somebody so um, who's been so successful in the field. So what I want to do is I want to put out an announcement. Um, I don't know how long we'll wait, one month, two months, three weeks. I don't know. I want you to ask me any question that you would like Chuck Adams to answer. Arrow builds, broadheads, boots, bags, pack outs, whatever. No questions off limits. Whatever question you want to hear Chuck answer, shoot them over to me at the hunting one one podcast at gmail.com. And me and Chuck will convene back on another podcast and uh, we'll go through all those questions and answer some of those questions, um, which I'm kind of excited to do. 
um, because I know, you know, I've got a lot of questions. Chuck runs um, an inReach system, a Garmin inReach, and I'm a huge fan of Garmin. Uh, and so just some questions on how that, that works with his, his scouting and mapping and all sorts of things like that. But if you've got any questions for Chuck, shoot them over to me, thehunting101podcast at gmail.com, and uh, me and Chuck will convene back and, uh, and do a little podcast called Ask Chuck. Um, before we go, I do got to give a quick thank you to our friends over at Three Rivers Archery. Uh, Three Rivers Archery is your one-stop shop for all things traditional, all things arrows, longbows, recurves, quivers, everything you could ever dream of for traditional archery. Three Rivers has it. It's in stock. It ships quick. And those guys are phenomenal to work with and ask questions with and and to they they know the equipment because they use the equipment so call them ask them pick their brains place an order the guys over at three rivers archer are absolutely phenomenal go check them out chuck from the bottom of my heart welcome to bear archery i am so incredibly excited to see you come on board and i cannot wait to see how many animals you'll put on the ground with a bear bow well thank you dylan uh, i'm uh, at least as excited as you are I'm going to give a shout out for my uh, website, uh, chuckadamsarchery.com, and uh, my new Instagram account, uh, Chuck Adams Archery Official. Uh, as you know, we were hacked uh, about a month ago. Uh, our account has never come back. We lost our followers. It's been very frustrating, uh, but we started a new account, my wife, Greta, and I. Uh, you can find us at Facebook and uh, Instagram at Chuck Adams Archery Official. Now, I was in, there's two people, two people that I like um, that never had social media. And then when they got it, they both kind of got it around the same time. And I'm like, yes, that's Chuck Adams. And, um, oh, my Lord. I cannot believe I just did this. He was on the last episode. You'll have to edit all this out, Aaron. Um, Chris Perino. That's Chuck mm-hmm. Adams, and that's Chris Perino. Uh, both of which are phenomenal bow hunters, uh, but you never got to follow along with them on social media. Now you can. And so those two guys, I was incredibly excited uh, to see on social media. But Chuck, I, I can't tell you enough. I remember when I got the phone call uh, and Chuck Adams coming to Bear Archer was a possibility. I was so excited. I'm so excited that it happened. I can't believe you're on board with Bear Archery. I truly believe uh, that Fred Bear would would be incredibly happy to see somebody like Chuck Adams on board. Um, you know, and it's not just you, but I think that bear archery and who they align themselves with sponsorship wise would, would also make Fred bear proud, you know, guys like Chuck Adams, Fred Eichler, uh, those, I mean, those two names right there in and of themselves are perfect for bear archery. Um, but then you get in, I mean, I could go down the list, Shane Mowry, the, 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 the hunting public crew, every, everybody that bear archery works with Chris Perino, um, Matt Jennings. Um, I mean, I think everybody that bear archery works with, I can look at, and I know I'm, I'm missing people. So, so don't listen to this and, and text me and say, what about Christy Titus? I know all those people. Um, but everybody that bear archery aligns themselves with, I think I can look at and say they handle themselves in a way that that Fred Bear uh, would be proud and that Bear Archery should be proud of. And and to me, that just speaks volumes. Um, And I think, Chuck, you're just the perfect um, addition to that team. So welcome to Bear Archery. Welcome to the Fred Bear way. And uh, can't wait to to see at ATA this week. I owe you a big fat steak dinner. Um, But. I can't wait to, to hang out with you a little bit in the bear archery booth, pick your brain. Uh, but guys, any questions you got for Chuck Adams, send them over to me and, uh, and we'll convene back here and answer in, any and all questions. Nothing's off limits. Well, there's a few things off limits, but uh, <laughs> we'll just ignore those if they roll in. Uh, Chuck, thank you so much for joining us guys. Thank you so much for listening. And uh, if you're at any shows coming up, make sure and find me, make sure and find Chuck. Uh, we look forward to hanging out with you. Thank you, Dylan.